Hey guys, Sobro Oni of GND Reviews here with an in-depth look at the upcoming Onigashima event for FGO NA. Just like with all my other guides, this is going to be extremely in-depth, covering everything from what servants are going to be in the gacha to the most efficient strategies for farming and defeating the raid bosses. So in the description below, there are going to be timestamps so you can jump ahead to whichever part of the video you need the most. So with that out of the way, let's get right into talking about the upcoming servants for the event. First up, we'll be getting a brand new welfare servant, Kintoki Rider. He's a rider servant with 9,819 max attack and 10,800 max HP. You'll get him for completing the event, and I highly recommend you do so because he's an outstanding rider. I have a full spotlight on him linked in the description below, so do check that out. The next new servant we are getting is the 4-star Ibaraki Doji. She's only available in the gacha for the event, and she is a 4-star Berserker with 9,636 max attack and 10,954 max HP. She will be permanent after the event, so don't worry if you don't get her now. She is also a fantastic Berserker. I will be doing a spotlight on her tomorrow, so look forward to that. And the limited poster servant for this event is Minamoto no Raiko. She is a 5-star Berserker with 11,556 max attack and 13,500 max HP. Yet again, another outstanding Berserker. I highly recommend rolling for it. She is limited, and I will be having a spotlight out on her sometime tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. On top of those three, we're also going to get rate-ups for a couple of 3-stars as well. First up, we're getting rate-ups for Ushi and Kyohime. Both fantastic 3-star servants, top tier 3-star servants, I highly recommend rolling for them and maxing them out if you haven't already. They're especially going to be great for this event. And we're actually getting a brand new 3-star servant, Fuma Kotaro. He is an Assassin class 3-star with 7,091 max attack and 8,844 max HP. He is a very strong crit star generator, so if you need a crit star generator, I highly recommend rolling for him. He's very much worth it. And those are all the servants we're getting with this event, so let's talk a bit more about the craft essences we're getting. We're going to be getting five new craft essences with this event. Three are going to be only available in the event gacha, and two of them are going to be available in the event shop and from the damage point ladder. So let's talk about the event gacha craft essences first. First up, we have the three-star craft essence Hidden Sword Pheasant Reversal, which increases crit card effectiveness by 3% and crit strength by 8%. It also increases coral drops by 1%. If you limit break it, it's going to increase your quick card effectiveness by 5%, increase crit strength by 10%, and coral drops by 2 It goes well on servants like Ku Prototype or even servants like Okita if you want to save some cost in your party. Overall, a pretty decent craft essence. Next up, we have the 4-star craft essence Faithful Companions. It increases arch card effectiveness by 8% and NP gain by 15%. It also increases textile drops by 1%. If you limit break it, it's going to increase your arch card effectiveness by 10%, NP gain by 20%, and textile drops by 2 Yet again, a very good craft essence here, especially for art servants. Vlad, Shiki, Orion, and Uriel particularly will benefit from this type of craft essence. And finally, we have the 5-star event craft essence, Dumpling Over Flowers. It increases quick card effectiveness by 15%, and NP strength by 15%. It also increases the box drops by 1%. If you limit break it, it's going to increase your quick card effectiveness by 20%, NP strength by 20%, and box drops by 2 As you can imagine, very strong on single target quick servants like Okita, Skahawk, and Ushi. Now let's take a look at the event shop craft essences. First up we have the 5 star Golden Sumo. It increases your attack by 10% and your NP gauge by 30% at the start of the battle. It'll also increase your strength by 100% for this event. If you limit break it, it's going to increase attack by 15%, NP gauge by 50%, and attack strength by 200% for this event. This is a top tier event craft essence. It doesn't get any better than this. It absolutely is one of the best craft essences we will ever get from any event because it works on every servant because it's a flat attack increase. It's basically good on any servant that you want to use offensively. And finally, we have the 5-star Lunar Hot Spring Craft Essence. It increases crit strength by 20% and grants 3 crit stars per turn. It also increases the attack of all allies by 50% for this event. If you limit break it, it's going to grant 4 crit stars per turn, increase crit strength by 25%, and increase the attack of all allies by 100% for this event. Another really, really strong craft essence here. It's especially great on crit servants. It makes them a bit more self-sufficient as they can produce stars for themselves. So this will go great on servants like Gil, Ku Prototype, Rama, Okita, basically any crit servant. So those are all the new craft essences we're getting for this event. Overall, very, very strong. These are some of the best event craft essences we will ever get. 
and let's talk a bit more about the event shop itself. So just like with most events, there are going to be three different currencies you're going to collect and farm so that you can trade them in at the shop. Those are going to be the corals, the textiles, and the boxes. Coral is going to be the easiest thing to farm. You can trade those in for a copy of the Kentucky Rider Servant, a copy of the Golden Sumo Craft Essence, Evil Bones, Void Dust, Dragon Fangs, HP and Attack Foes, 3 star and 4 star experience, and Green Beans. The textiles will be traded in for another copy of Kentucky Rider, another copy of the Golden Sumo Craft Essence, Red Bloodstone Tears, Ghost Lanterns, Snake Jewels, Lancer, Rider, Assassin, and Berserker Pieces, and the Blue Arts Beans. And finally, the boxes are going to be the gold item that you're collecting. You can trade those in for two copies of Kentucky Rider, two copies of the Event Craft Essence, Reverse Dragon Scales, Chaos Talons, Homunculi Babies, Lancer, Rider, Assassin, and Berserker Monuments, Red Buster Beans, and 500 Mana Prisms. So overall, if you want to clear out the shop, you're going to need 6,500 Corals, 7,300 Textiles, and 9,200 Boxes to clear the shop. So a good amount of farming ahead of you. Let's talk a bit about the raid structure. In a lot of ways, this is going to be very similar to the Rashomon event with some very slight but important changes. For one thing, we're still using the same system. It's going to be BP for the raid event and AP for the free quest. We have 8 BP that recovers at the rate of 1 BP per hour, exactly the same as Rashomon. Instead of using rice to recover your BP, we're going to be using dumplings, which is just a special event item we're going to get. Another minor difference is instead of fighting one raid boss, there's going to be four raid bosses. We're still going to be using the global HP system that's going to work exactly the same as Rashomon, so each raid boss is going to have something like 4 trillion HP, and everyone's damage on the server is calculated collectively to bring that HP bar down to zero. However, where we differ from Rashomon is there is not going to be any timers for the event. Rather, it's going to be more of a sequential raid that gets harder the further along it goes. So the four raid bosses are going to be the Green Oni, the Blue Oni, the Red Oni, and Raiko herself. And the way it works is after you defeat the Green Oni in the raid, you'll unlock more story missions and you'll get to fight the Blue Oni. Once we kill the Blue Oni as a collective server, there's going to be more story missions and you'll unlock the Red Oni. And then once we kill the Red Oni, you unlock Raiko after a few more story missions. Once Raiko is defeated, you can go back and do all the other raid quests that you maybe have missed if you need to farm more damage points, but we're not constrained by a timer this time around. And there are two major differences between Rashomon and Onigashima, those being, for one thing, there's going to be five difficulty levels this time around, so in Rashomon we had three difficulties, one, two, and three BP, but this time we're getting five. There's going to be two 1 BPs, two 2 BPs, and one 3 BP. And you'll be facing the raid boss at 100,000 HP, 300,000, 1 million, 3 million, and 6 million, respectively. And this is a great change for a lot of players because I know a lot of people were finding the 1 million too easy and the 6 million too difficult. So now we have a 3 million HP option that should be perfect for a lot of people. And you can absolutely clear the event just doing the 3 million HP raid. There's no reason to do 6 million unless you want to and you're able to. The other major difference is we'll be getting the damage points even if your team dies. So for Rashomon, if you fought Ibaraki, you only got to keep the damage points you did to her if you survived for 15 turns or if you killed her. This time around, any damage you do to the raid boss stays unless you retreat so if you do the 6 million hp raid and you do 5 million damage to raiko and then your entire team dies you still get the 5 million damage points so it is absolutely viable to just have a whole powerhouse team go into the raid and do as much damage as possible before they die it's a completely viable strategy you don't need to turtle behind double waver or jean and tamamo or anything like that and this way you can approach the raid in the best way that works for you so now let's talk a bit about damage points so just like with rashomon we're gonna have a damage ladder the more damage points you deal the more rewards you get unlike rashomon it's going to cap out at 200 million instead of 300 million so it's a bit easier as far as what items you can get if you complete all of the damage ladder you can get up to 46 million qp 650 mana prisms, 5 tickets, 
10 bronze, silver, and gold apples, 20 octuplet crystals, 20 feathers, 10 hearts, 10 spirit roots, 20 bicorn horns, 3 lores, 20 regular dumplings, 15 gold dumplings, all of Ryder Kentucky's ascension items, 1 golden sumo craft essence, and 6 of the lunar hot spring craft essences. So the damage point is going to be how you get the Kentucky ascension materials, and the event shop is going to be where you buy your copies of Kentucky to upgrade his noble phantasm. Of course, there's also going to be story quests for this event, and it's going to be a fairly lengthy story. In total, there's going to be 14 different sections, so it's kind of like a little mini story singularity. And of course, beating these story missions will unlock the raid boss, who then unlocks more story missions after that. You'll be able to get Kintoki as a temporary servant after you beat the second story mission, and he'll join you permanently after you clear the last story mission, Act 14 which only happens after the server beats Raiko. As far as how difficult the story is, it's extremely easy. You can actually beat these story missions with just using the guest servants that we're getting. There are no enemies with more than 70,000 HP. If I had to recommend servants for it, then I'd highly recommend using Ushi, Nobu, and Kyohime. But the story itself is pretty much just super simple, super easy. If you're able to clear Orleans, you should be able to clear the story for this event. On the bright side, we do get a grail after completing it, so it is worth doing. The far more difficult portion of the event is the raids themselves, so let's get into the meat of it. Thankfully, we're going to be getting a lot of servants that have bonus damage for this event, which makes the raids a lot easier. Both Kentoki Rider and Raikou will have 100% damage bonus for this event. Berserker Kentoki, Shuten, Ibaraki, Kyohime, Ushi, and Fuma will have 80% damage bonus for this event. And Benkei Amakusa Emiya, Assassin Emiya, Okita, Nobu, Kojiro, Tamamo, and both Shikis will have a 60% damage bonus for this event. Basically, all the Japanese servants are going to have a damage bonus. So if you have any of these servants, I highly recommend leveling them up before this event. There are going to be four different types of raid bosses. There's going to be the green Oni, the blue Oni, the red Oni, and Raiko herself. Each of the Onis has a different resistance. The green Oni is resistant to quick attacks. It takes 50% less damage from quick. The blue Oni is resistant to arts attacks. He takes 50% less damage from arts. And the red Oni is resistant to buster damage, 50% less damage from buster attacks. During the course of this event, we'll be rewarded with an item called beans that come in green, red, and blue flavors. And before each raid battle, you'll get an option to use one of these beans for your entire party. If you ate a green bean, you'll get a 50% quick buff for your entire party. Red bean will give you a 50% buster buff. And of course, arts beans will give you a 50% arts buff. So this will negate the resistances that each of the Onis have. However, it's more wise to just avoid using Quick Servants against the Green Oni, Art Servants against the Blue Oni, and Buster Servants against the Red Oni, and just use the beans to strengthen whatever servants you are using. For example, using a Blue Bean on Shiki to strengthen her Arts damage against the Green Oni. So just be smart about how you use the beans. You don't really need them once you have the Craft Essences, but they are nice to have. Every bit of damage helps. Like I mentioned earlier, there's no timers like with Rashomon, so once a boss is killed, 10 minutes later, you'll get more story missions and you'll make your way to the next raid boss. And then once Raiko is killed, all the previous raid bosses will return so that you can fight them again until the end of the event if you need to farm damage points. And also, like I mentioned, there's going to be 5 difficulty levels, 100,000, 300,000, 1 million, 3 million, and 6 million. Just farm whichever one is easiest for you. As far as the best strategy for winning, there are a few tips I can give. For one, focus on getting damage points instead of clearing the shop when the event first starts. Don't worry about clearing the shop until after Raiko is defeated. Reason being, we get extra free quests after we kill Raiko, which makes farming easier. Stick to the 1-2 BP missions that you can do best until you have enough craft essences to take down the 3 BP. Just like with Rashomon, don't even bother doing the 3 BP until you at least have a limit broken golden sumo and two or three of the lunar hot springs craft essences. I highly recommend limit breaking the sumo craft essence as soon as possible. You should limit break it immediately once you get your fifth copy. And always keep in mind that you should never withdraw from any of these fights. Even if you die in the middle of a fight, all the damage you've done still counts. So your options for each raid are you can kill the raid boss, 
you can survive for 15 turns, or you can just do as much damage as possible and let your team die. So if you are lacking in defensive servants like Tamamo or Waver or Media Lily, then I highly recommend just going full damage and doing as much damage as you possibly can to get as much damage points as possible. And the stage structure is going to be the same as Rashomon, it's going to be a two-wave fight. The first wave is a bunch of really weak mob enemies that you want to use to build up your Noble Phantasm off of. And then the second stage is going to be the raid boss and an ally. You don't need to kill the ally, you just need to kill the raid boss, similar with Rashomon. Once you kill the raid boss, the raid ends and you win. Now I want to specifically touch on Raikou, because the Onis are pretty straightforward, you just need to make sure you don't use what they're resistant to against them. But Raikou specifically is a very challenging raid boss. She has a bonus against demonic earth and sky servants, and those include a lot of servants. A lot of servants fall under the earth and sky category, so if you're using any of these servants, you're going to be at a big disadvantage against her because she has a huge damage buff against these servants. In addition, she has a skill that lets her charge her Noble Phantasm for this event, and she has an AoE Noble Phantasm. That means that she can get her Noble Phantasm off really quick, and because it's AoE and she's a Berserker, it's going to kill your entire team. So you're going to want some kind of protection from AoE damage on your team. She also has an evade, which means that she will evade spam on occasion, just like the AI loves to do. So if you see her use evade three turns in a row, it's not really much you can do about it. Make sure to bring somebody who can remove debuffs or can hit through evade. Thankfully, Raikou also has a ton of weaknesses. On top of being a berserker with no resistances, she's also a female, demonic, and divine riding servant. So she's especially susceptible to anti-female servants like Jack and Carmilla. She's susceptible to anti-demonic servants like Rama. There are a ton of servants that are anti-divine like Skahawk. And Nobu is both anti-divine and anti-riding and gets a damage bonus for this event. So do keep that in mind. Those are probably your best choices against Raikou. Speaking of which, let's touch on the servants I recommend for the raid. So I'm going to recommend servants for each individual raid boss. Of course, I highly recommend the traditional supports, so Jean, Hans, Waver, Tamamo, Media Lily, Mosh, all those defensive servants that were good in my last Rashomon guide are still going to apply for this guide, but I'm going to talk more about the offensive servants that I recommend. For the green Oni, I highly recommend using Rama because he has an anti-demonic trait and the Onis are all demonic. Robin Hood for the high burst damage, Uriel and Orion and Meb because the Onis are male, so they'll do high burst damage as well. Brynhilda, Li Xuen, Sanzo, Shiki, Jolter for the high burst damage, and basically any Buster Berserker, Herc, Kualter, Raikou, anyone. As long as you're not using Quick Servants against him, you're absolutely fine. And then of course, again, I highly recommend bringing some defensive servants with you if you're doing the 3 million or 6 million HP versions. So bring a Waver or Hans or someone to keep you alive. For the Blue Oni, I highly recommend bringing Kintoki Rider. Again, bring Rama for the anti-demonic. Uriel and Orion and Meb for the same exact reason. Even though Uriel and Orion are art servants, it is worth bringing them because their damage modifier is so crazy high against males. So I would recommend in that case, if you are bringing them, to use the Blue Beans to erase the Oni's resistance. Also, Brynhilda, Sanzo, Okita, Caesar, Ku, and Skahawk are great choices, as are Ushi, Anne and Mary, Jolter, and again, any Buster Servant. You're just going to want to avoid Art Servants aside from Uriel and Orion. Next up, we have the Red Oni. Yet again, Kentucky Rider, an excellent choice for this fight. Rama is again an excellent choice, even though he's a Buster Servant. The anti-demonic damage he does is so high that it's worth using a red bean on him just so that you can get that full damage. Orion and Uriel and Meb, again, anti-male, great choices. Okita, Caesar, Robin Hood, and Li Xuen, high burst damage there. Shiki, Skahawk, Ushi, and Anne and Mary also provide extremely high burst damage. But the tricky part about this boss fight is that the Red Oni is resistant to Buster, so it might not be worth it to use any of your traditional Berserkers like Herc or Kualter. Instead, you're going to want to maybe use Fran or even Ibaraki and Raikou because they have that tremendous damage buff for this event. But I would say overall, 
rely less on Berserkers against the Red Oni. And finally, Raiko herself. The best choices against her are Jack and Carmilla for the anti-female, Rama for the anti-demonic, and Skahawk and Jolter will absolutely do a ton of damage with their Noble Phantasms as well, and they have a bit of survivability to dodge her AoE Noble Phantasm. Gil and Tesla are great choices for this as well, they'll do bonus damage against her. But for those of you who have Nobu, I absolutely recommend putting her in your party because she's anti-divine and anti-riding. Both are traits that Raiko has, plus she's an event servant with a massive 60% damage bonus, so she should absolutely melt Raiko. And that's all the advice I have for the raid bosses and the fighting. If you have any questions or team comps you want me to look at, let me know in the comments below. Now let's go on to talking about farming for the shop currencies. So when it comes to farming for the shop items, first things first, make sure you buy the event craft essences from the shop before anything else because they're super important for the raid. However, I would say you don't have to worry about farming and clearing out the shop until you finish off the raid boss. So until Raiko's defeated, reason being all the best locations to farm are unlocked after Raiko's defeated. So really you're just wasting AP and time if you're farming earlier than that. I also don't recommend buying any of the beans from the shop because you'll get plenty of them from the event and they drop from quest all the time. It's really just a waste of currency to buy them. What you're gonna wanna do as soon as the event starts is roll the friend point gacha to get as many of the three star event craft essence as possible, which will help you with farming for the coral. And then you're gonna wanna farm the beginning area for enough coral to buy the event craft essence from the shop, and that's it. Once you've bought that event craft essence from the shop, then just go ahead and keep farming the raid. And then when your BP is recharging, go back and farm more coral and keep doing this until the Oni is defeated and unlocks the next section. Then you'll wanna farm more textiles until you can buy the event craft essence from the shop and rinse and repeat. Once you have all the event craft essences from the shop, you really shouldn't be bothering with farming that much. I wouldn't say waste any apples at all on this event until the last few days, keep your apples safe. You should only be farming when your BP is recharging. Don't worry about any serious item farming until after the event, because once Raiko is defeated, it will unlock a new difficulty for all the free quests called the Rakshasa difficulty, which will drop a lot more currencies. So wait until then before you do any serious farming and definitely don't use any apples until then. As for the best spots for farming for each item, farm for corals on the Mountain Pass free quest on the Rakshasa difficulty, and if that's too difficult, you can do it on the Demon difficulty. Both of them are 40 AP. For textiles, you're gonna wanna farm those at the Tea House. Again, on the Rakshasa difficulty, 40 AP. If it's too difficult, then you can do the Demon difficulty, also 40 AP, but the Rakshasa will drop more textile drops. And finally, you can farm the boxes at the Hot Springs free quest. Again, do the Rakshasa difficulty or Demon if it's too difficult. Both of them are 40 AP. On top of farming for the event items, you should also be farming for any Ascension materials you need because there's quite a few of them here. There are a lot of Ascension material drops in this event. I'm just going to list them off here. You can farm for Evil Bones at the coast, Horseshoes at the forest, Dragon Fangs and Chaos Talons at the Mountain Pass, Yadrissal Seeds at the Village, Phoenix Feathers and Hearts at the Tower, Ghost Lanterns at the Checkpoint, Ancient Gears at the Mountain Trail, Snake Jewels and Black Tar Pots at the Tea House, Void Dust and Blood Tear Stones at the Hot Spring, Octuplet Crystals and Spirit Roots at the Cave, and you can farm Dragon Scales at the Summit. So if you need any of those, this is a perfect time to farm for them. And that about wraps up everything I have to say about the event. If I were to give a quick summary, uh, I would say make sure when the event starts, you roll that friend point gotcha for the three star craft essences. Farm until you have enough corals to buy the event craft essence. And then just keep farming until you can buy all the craft essences and do the raids so that you can get as much DP as possible. You're going to want to focus more on getting damage points instead of clearing the shop early on. Because after the raid is finished and we kill Raiko, 
there's going to be a new free quest that opens up that is just a better farming spot. So make sure you start off the event by getting as much damage points as possible and then just worry about farming the currencies later. If you have Nobu and Rama, they're especially great for this event, so make sure you use them. And especially remember, even if you do fail one of the raids, as long as you don't retreat, you still get to keep all the damage done, so it's not worth it to retreat. Just do as much damage as you can and get the rewards. And that about wraps it up, so if you have any comments or you have any questions or want me to examine your team comp, let me know in the comments below and I'll take a look at it. I wish everyone luck during this event. It's a lot easier than Rashomon, so it should be a lot more enjoyable. So good luck to everyone. If you aren't already, follow us on Twitter, join the party over at our Discord, and follow us on Twitch. And I will see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. Silveroni out. Later.